So today, let us see the reverse square. This last time, so far, what we did is we could define the uh, regular grid for our target area. We could uh, source uh, data, the geospatial data on uh, on soils and, and in rainfall and, and NASA like that. And last time we looked that into the R lean tool part. And today I want to show you the reverse quest part, the one that that gives us the uh, soil indigenous nutrient supply for the NOT locations, right? For our omission trial locations. And um, if I run it, this will be the data that, that I will have. Uh, it is coming from our trial location, right? I do have a trial ID. I do have a country, uh, what trial it is, and then the blobs. This data already went through the linear mixed effects model. I already pass it through and I already get the blobs. The residual variance is dropped out. Uh, why I didn't show you that one? Because that space is different for every data. You know your data. If you want to use the raw data without any processing, you want to drop some outliers, you want to do a certain transformation, you want to average it to, to a certain level, fit a certain model, or do the same as I, I, I did, fit linear fixed, mixed effects model. That is all different that is not something we can make generic so no need to spend the time on it but this is what i get so on that on, on that uh, on on trial id 02 in 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 burundi i got about 16.8 ton for the npk treatment 9.4 for pk treatment read it like that and the location the longitude and latitude for that location i also have because it is my trial location so the next step is also specific for our data. I am just converting it into a dry matter. Uh, it is a fresh matter weight of the soil that the thingy that you saw. The values here that you saw, these values are a fresh cassava weight. But Quefts and, and Lintul, they work with a dry matter weight, a dry weight. Mm, dry crop weight. I don't know how to how to how do you call it. Anyway, you know what I mean, right? So it is about thirty percent of uh, the yield that you harvest is uh, dry matter. The rest is just just water. So I converted that one, and now I am running my reverse quaffers function. In my reverse quaffers function, I need to give as an input my data which is what you see here displayed as uh, the head of it and then what is a full rate in my trial for nitrogen a full rate for p a full rate for k and what is the crop because the crop parameters are depending on the crop that i have and if i have a half rate uh, a half rate of it or normally i have a control right but in our case, we had a half rate as well as a six treatment added just to see um, uh, fertilizer use efficiency as well to account for that. If I have any other thing, other one, NPK, NP, PK, um, and what is that, NK, and a control, if I have any other treatment, I can add it, therefore, because I will use it as a validation set. That's it. So if we go to the reverse quest is the function itself. That is this one. You can see it well or should I zoom? You hear it me? is fine. It is fine. Ah, OK, OK, so uh, mostly my my scripts, they are uh, they do have air oxygen, so they, they will have the the general thingy, the general uh, <laughs> documentation on top and mostly you will find I write in my vocabulary the is written T-E-H not T-H-E it's so funny it's always like that so <laughs> anyway um, so if you see it that is the data these are defined here what they are what the parameters are they are they are defined here and if I have a half rate if this was true I need to tell them 
it, it, it doesn't necessarily strictly be a half rate, right? It can also be just a reduced N rate, a reduced P rate. So I could put half rate, yes, uh, true, and then I can define how much is then the rate of the N in this whatever extra treatment, a rate of uh, P and rate of K. So when we run it, what it does is, I'm, I'm looking for a soil in PK, right? The, the soil indigenous nutrient supply. And for every location, it takes the data. Uh, maybe I can I can show you running it. Let me define the parameters. My half rate is false. And let me say my I is just one. For the first one, I want to run. So, oh, find this thing again. OK. And I will store it in here in the soil NPK, my, my estimation. I took one data, one row of data, and then the water limited yield in this uh, nutrient omission trial, the concept is that, that you give it ample, when in your full NPK, you give it ample amount of NPK treatment, the only limitation you will have is water. That is why what you see here is my water limited yield is set as the dry matter for NPK treatment response. But you don't have to do it that way. If you know the water limited yield in your area, if you have a value that you know from expert knowledge, you can set it like that as well. But with the Nakilimo, we are doing it like that. So I don't have half rate. Directly, I will come here. And first, I will create the fertilizer matrix. And we, I will just do that and I will show you. My fertilizer matrix looks like this. Full, the nitrogen, the P and the K. When it is all zero, it is a control. When there is only four P and K, the second one, it is N omission. When P is zero, it is P omission and K omission. So I have here the control and the three omissions. That is what I have. And then I will create the yield matrix. Voila. If you see it here, from this data that I take, right, from the one, the, the, the first row, the subset that I took, I just rate these values, the dry matter values, and I gave them here. So my control is to, 2500 whatever I I, I I'm just at, at this point there is no any calculation or anything I am just creating my fertilizer data frame I created my yield of data frame I created and the real trick is becoming here it is here in the optimizer in the optimizer this one last time did I show you did I? No, that was lintul. We didn't see yet yet uh, In the optimizer, you give your fertilizer, you give your yield matrix, you give your water limited yield, you define your crop, as I said, and then you call a function called optim ins. The optimum ins. Give me that you're telling him. Given. Um, given the yield that I am observing in this location and the fertilizer that I added for this specific condition. That is what it is doing. So when it optimizes, the total sum of squares is the cost function here. So it is optimizing it until it gets the total sum of squares very, very low. It goes on in iteration. And it, it runs this optim INS. This optim is an R function. I just sourced it. I did not write this optim. This is a function. The function I wrote is the optim INS. And the optim INS, when you give it a fertilizer, uh, the fertilizer data and the yield data, it just gives you how much nutrient there will be in the soil. But the optim does the trick the iterate the iterative process is in forced upon the system in optim where the, the total sum of, until the, the total sum of squares is minimum so 
I get my soil NPK. It is telling me now. If you tell me your fertilizer is your fertilizer data looks like that. Your yield observed yield is like that. Then at that location, your N was 29, your P is 18 and your K was 22. That is what it is telling me. And then the next thing that I have to do, OK. If it is true, if it is true. And if I tell quests, this is the only fertilizer and nutrient amount I have in my soil. What kind of yield can it estimate for me? Which means I didn't add artificially anything. This is what the soil has. So that has to be then matched with the control yield I saw, right? Because the control yield, I already have a control treatment where nothing was added. There is an observed yield for it. And now I am going to ask Quaftus uh, uh, predict the control yield for me. And this predicted will stand next to the observed one, and that will be my validation set. That will be how I validate if indeed this is the optimize. Optimize in, in inside it is calling quests because you give it fertilizer the amount you added, you give him the yield matrix. Nutrient supply yield is linked through quests. So quests is called upon a, within the optimize as well. So I'm using Quaftus to go from a fertilizer to yield and get the INS. And then I'm using Quaftus, giving the soil INS and give me again what would be then the yield. I don't know if, if I'm if I'm absolutely uh, <laughs> absolutely clear here. Metal, can I ask a question? Sorry to interrupt you. Yes, please. The, the approach is clear, but I mean, do I understand correctly that you are assuming a hundred percent Agronomic use efficiency for the fertilizer applied? Um, no, no, I'm not assuming that because if you go to the optim INS, when you come here, this is the optim INS function, and yeah, yeah. it is uh, there is a recovery fraction. You see? Yeah, yeah. That so you are making the assumptions on the recovery. Okay, fair yes. enough. Yes. Yeah. On the recovery, and I have only three for the three crops that I tasted the Kilimo, cassava, maize, potato. I have the crop parameters, but now Patricia, if she want to use it for soil, for soy, I need to add what the crop parameters are for soy from soy crop modelers. I need to get these parameters. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's clear. Thank you, Michael. Of course, I mean, I think the assumption is that you are having these recovery fractions for all the fields in your data set. Yeah, which might be a bit of a brave assumption, but good to start with. So yeah, that's clear. Yeah. So he does that iteratively. It runs and at the end of the day, if you run this function, what you will get is for every point that you have. I will just read this data here. Because it is already run. I don't want to run it again data and show you to do that for every trial. These are the fresh the fresh material. Sorry. These are the fresh material. These are the dry material that we converted. And when you come here, the control observed is here, which comes from my nutrient omission trial. The control estimated is what is estimated after with this reverse quest the soil NPK is estimated. Input that thing back to Quaftus and estimate the control yield. That is what is done. And now if we plot observed versus estimated, that is where we will see how strong or how good or bad our logic is doing, right? And this is here plotted. And zoom. So these are for three countries. For Burundi, DRC, and Rwanda. And when you see it for Burundi and Rwanda, it works like a dream. It you cannot you cannot do it better than this. It's really, really, really good. On the x-axis, you have the observed yield. On the y-axis, you have the predicted yield. It works really good. For DRC, it is not working very good because the data input, the NOT data for the DRC was completely bad, very, very, very bad. You have locations where 
the control yield is giving almost as double yield as the end of full NPK. You cannot imagine you will be punished by adding NPK on, on yield, right? So this, this I, I, I left the RSC in there for you will see it as well that it is not the logic workers, the reasoning workers, the crop models workers, but it works as good as the data input that, that you have. And these things, if you see it um, here as well, although it is a research managed trial, there were there were really uh, some some irregularities. It was the first season to to bring these analytics, these um, nutrient omission trials to uh, Rwanda and, and, and Burundi as well. The control wasn't really, really good. The data that we have in in in, in Akilimo, if I show you that, that is like a much more narrower. It is almost like a one to one kind of mapping that that you get. So from any component of Akilimo, if there is one thing that I would bet on again and again is the reverse quests work it work is perfect. You cannot do more than that. Um, so yeah, um, I, I, we have only two minutes. I will not go further into the next step would be now you know your soil NPK for your trial location. The next step will be relate these ones into the geospatial data of your trial location. Therefore, you will train your random forest. You will have random forest that that says soil nitrogen as a response to all the other data that you can get on soil, on rainfall, on soil fertility index, all those things, soil moisture, digital elevation model, whatever, whatever. That model, you train it on your trial site. That same model, you go to farmer's site, and then from that farmer, um, farmer uh, John, John field, his, his soil, his rainfall, his slopes, his soil moisture, everything you put in there, and this trained random forest model will tell you what soil N, soil P, soil K is there on his specific for farm. And once you get that one, you will estimate then, OK, if it is like that, then what will be his current yield? And you know from your DSAT, what is its ceiling? And then where is then the most profitable? That is that thing. So, but let me stop that one here. On reverse questions, if you have question, we can discuss. And otherwise, for all of you here, if I don't know your GitHub link uh, username, please send me by email your your GitHub username. I will share the, the scripts. You will not be able to run it because as you see, this function here, you see the link home Akilimo project. This is Akilimo server. We are working it on Akilimo server, but at least you will have the script. And when Eduardo and um, Sotiris, when Sotiris does what Eduardo is asking in creating that that the CG lab space, the, the background data will be deployed, deployed there, the path will be changed. You have the script, then you can test that is idea. Yeah. Any question? I, I have a question, quickly, but just yeah. on the on the on the issue of uh, of the background data, the because this will require like we have mentioned uh, NOTs. Uh, is there a plan to to that we test it with uh, yeah with with the NOTs uh, that you have or 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 you think it's best that uh, we try with uh, the others? Um, I don't know this. Uh, uh, I, OK, we have Akai as well there. I think I will put Akai data there. Uh, this Rwanda and Burundi, we are doing it with SIP, with uh, Alka as well. So that one needs their permission as well. But you will have the Akai data and you will, we will test it with that. Everybody can test it with that. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. No, you're welcome. Then I wish you a very good afternoon.